temperatures are sky high. We in Canada right now are noticing that in a lot of our inner city areas, there are no more banks, not even credit unions are present. So people will fall prey if they go to a local convenience store, they're paying a small fortune to have access to their own money. And the NDP would make it a priority to compel the banks to have fair ATM fees, not the five, six dollar a transaction that we're seeing combined now in many of those banking machines. All right, good evening from the nation's capital. I'm David Ake, and that, of course, was Thomas Mulcair, the NDP leader. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to start tonight with this battleground Canada story. In the House of Commons today, uh, there is, or in the House of Commons several times a year, the opposition parties get a chance to set the agenda for the day's debates in the House. In parliamentary language, it's called a supply day or an opposition day. Well, today was one of those days, and it was the NDP who got a chance to pick the topic. And what did they want to spend the day debating? No, not the Senate scandal, not electoral reform or arcane inside baseball stuff. Instead, they wanted to debate ATM fees, the fact that Canada's biggest banks are nickel and diming us on the way to billions of dollars in profits every year. It is all part of a conscious effort by the New Democrats to position their party as the party of the consumer in time for next year's uh, election. Ever since the beginning of the year, Thomas Mulcair and his party have been focusing on issues of affordability. So, will it pay off? Well, let's ask NDP MP Peggy Nash. And Peggy is in our uh, Toronto newsroom. And Peggy, I, I think I've got that pretty much right. This is not the first time we're going to hear you guys talk about an affordability issue. That's going to be one of your big themes for the year, is it not? Uh, sure, affordability is a long time NDP issue. You probably heard Jack Layton talking about mm -hmm. affordability, bank fees, credit card rates, that kind of thing. It's been a long standing push to make life more affordable and will continue to be a priority for New Democrats. We, uh, over the last uh, few weeks, we've been trying to look at the electorate in different ways and find out what is an NDP liberal switcher, what is a conservative New Democrat switcher. You know there's some voters out there who, who think only in blue and orange terms and forget about the liberal team. And the conclusion we've got is that those folks who might have voted conservative but might also vote New Democrat, that's the populist vote. That is the you know working class person who doesn't like the fact that big banks are ripping us off. And this particular measure seems aimed right square at that particular group. Well, sure, David. As you know, household debt is at, at an all-time high. And you said the phrase yourself, being nickel and dime to death. You know, people feel their, their wages are squeezed, but their costs are going up. And it's, it's these irritants that really hit people in the pocketbook. You know, it, to take out your own money, you have to pay 2 or $3. That, that really irks people. You want to get $20 out of the bank, and you got to pay another 2 or $3. So, um, it, you know, when we look at the cost of, of actually uh, undertaking an ATM transaction, it can be around 35 36 cents. So there's no reason why the banks couldn't, for example, still make a profit if they charge people 50 cents to take their money out of a machine that did not belong to the bank the person actually has their account in. But to charge them $3, you're right, it does lead to multi-billion dollar profits. And people say, listen, the little guy's getting squeezed. What about us? And uh, I don't think that has a party line. I think people just want to get a better shake in life, and we agree with them. Um, let, you, uh, I was watching a bit of the debate in the House today, and some of it was extending itself onto Twitter and other social media. And one of the arguments I saw that, that I thought, okay, well, this has some merits against this idea, is saying if you go and pass a regulation that caps uh, ATM fees, banks are just going to eat it up elsewhere by, for instance, you know, the monthly fee I pay for maybe all my checking and other services. Uh, they're going to jack that up by a couple of bucks a month. So, so if you take away from one hand, the banks are just going to take it away with the other. <laughs> right, because we get such a break on our right. monthly banking fees. <laughs> I mean, there's a whole range of charges where uh, I think, frankly, the, the, the costs have been larded in already. You know, you go into a, a small mom-pop store in your neighborhood and you pull out one of those uh, points-getting credit cards. It, you know, it might be good for you because you're, you're getting the points, but that small business is getting dinged big time with charges by the bank for you to use your credit card. So there's a whole range of charges that, that we could go after now. Um, sure, in, uh, in, in, in our economy, the banks can raise fees in other areas, but 
you know, they've got competitors too. Will all the banks raise the fees or will some banks actually want to go after consumers? Um, you know, in other countries, bank charges for using an ATM machine are much lower than here in Canada. So I think there is lots of possibility for improvement. We've heard, in fact, even the finance minister say that this is a serious problem, but sadly no action from the government. We think it's about time that they actually stood up for Canadian consumers and limited these excessive bank charges. You know life around here in the Parliament Hill bubble. We can often get obsessed about stories that we think are important, that the government is lousy on excess to information in the last parliament that they were almost the, the, they found a contempt of parliament and while I know that's very important to those of us who pay attention it's my sense voters pay a lot more attention to a party coming to them and saying we're going to make it cheaper for you to buy groceries cheaper for you to get on the bus etc etc does it sometimes difficult for you and I know you've been involved in some of these issues around the the contempt of parliament or whatever it might be to stay disciplined and say we're going to talk about affordability that's what new democrats have to be identified with well, David, I think it speaks to the times that we're in where people are getting squeezed financially. And I hear it when I go door to door. You know, if you're, if you're making a minimum wage salary or, or you're, you know, you're, you're really struggling to pay your mortgage or pay your rent, every penny counts. And, uh, you know, the banks are doing extremely well. And we're glad that we have a strong banking sector. We want a strong stable financial system and we do appreciate that but there has to be balance we do have to look out for the little guy and I think this breaks through to you know beyond the Ottawa bubble because it does hit home with how hard people are being squeezed financially and uh, you know I think they have a right people have a right to expect that their parliamentarians are going to represent them in the House of Commons and I hear a lot of people in my community saying enough is enough you know it's a couple of bucks here a couple of bucks there two bucks to pay a bill uh, if I want to pay it through the mail rather than by computer I don't have a computer it, people just get so angry and fed up and and I think they they have a right to expect action from their parliamentarians Peggy Nash is the NDP MP for Parkdale High Park Peggy thanks so much for joining us today Thanks, David. All right, let's bring in Dan Mater now. Dan, you've worked on some of these issues, I know, in your time in uh, advising ministers, conservative ministers. And, and this is one area, I, I find this fascinating, because it is one area where conservatives and New Democrats are, by and large, talking to the same group of voters, voters who think somebody's sticking it to me and I want the government to stand up uh, for the little guy. And the conservatives do have a long record of, you know, as I mentioned, tax credits or any kind of things. But the NDP definitely wants to engage the blue team on these issues. And I think one of the things that Peggy said right at the end there was really important when she said that these are things that make people really angry. Because mm -hmm. what these are, these are emotional issues. When you really think about on the grand scheme of things compared to whether you have a job or not, compared to whether the economy is growing, compared to how high your taxes are, a dollar here, a dollar there, probably isn't that big, mm -hmm. but it is a really emotional issue because people, when they get these fees, they get really angry at them. Yeah. And they, they say, somebody won't somebody do something about this. And the NDP has gone really good at finding these little micro issues and say, we're going to do something about it. You know what? Let's just step in and ban it. And I'm trying to remember now that Glenn Tebow is primarily the NDP MP who's their consumer affairs guy. And I think he was the one who said, you know, why, if I want a, a paper bill or a, uh, whatever, I shouldn't be charged for that. And some of the, and that idea, I think that's the one, ended up in the throne speech. And in fact, the government acted on it. So, I mean, hey, government's going to take an idea wherever it comes from, even if it's a new Democrat. Well, that's it. I mean, they, they, the conservatives and the NDP are both good at appealing to, to pocketbook issues, to issues mm -hmm. that, that affect people's day-to-day -day lives. The liberals have traditionally been a lot more about the grand theories, the grand schemes, as opposed to what people care about. If you look at the three elections that Stephen Harper won, in each one of them, he was pledging very specific things to help people and make life more affordable to them. He really took a lead on that. Jack Layden last election was really catching up and mm -hmm. trying to do that also. But Stephen Harper started in 2006 with, I would take two cents off the GST. Every time you go to the store, you're going to have a few more cents, a few more dollars in your pocket well, because of us. And it, really, every election since then, the Conservatives have been out in front on those types of things. And, and I got to tell you, sometimes it's really frustrating, or, or, or it can be frustrating for the press pack. And, and I'm one of these, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fess up here. I remember being on, on the Prime Minister's campaign tour. He was in Welland in 2000, the Young campaign, 2008, mm -hmm. and uh, was announcing that the Conservatives were going to ban candy-flavored tobacco products. And we all rolled mm -hmm. our eyes and went, 
well, who disagrees with this? Of course this is making sense. And meanwhile, Stefan Dion, the liberals, were at a university explaining a very complicated process about how they were going to help change post-secondary education. What do people understand quickly and easily? Yeah, that's a good but, idea. Get rid of candy-flavored tobacco that's products. That's it, exactly. Particularly if you were a parent who was a child in high mm -hmm. school and you're worried that your, your kid is going to start smoking and you hear that the government's going to take in a little action like this, yeah. that's really important to you. And that's something that's going to get your attention, that you're going to understand, that you're going to have an emotional connection with. And the Conservatives have been very good at this. And the NDP, the NDP is trying to catch up with a lot of these little things. And, and yet, again, this is the other thing where I, I, you heard me ask Peggy Nash about, about discipline. Um, maybe not so much for MPs and they're here in Ottawa, because, you know, us reporters are willing to talk about anything. But in your marketing and your messaging when you get outside the bubble is to stay away from all these weedy issues, as important as they may be about democratic reform and Senate reform or whatever it might be, um, and stay with some simple, clean messages, particularly for the NDP, who we've never seen them run a government, they need to really get associated with th this sort of stuff if they hope to win. Yeah, and people think of the NDP as this party, you know, quite far to the left. Right, the people conscience these of Parliament. about what they might do. So what they're trying to do is come up with these. And the other thing that policies like this are is, they're a policy that takes you a few seconds to say that almost everyone's going to have an emotional reaction to, that that sounds good, mm -hmm. and that there are very good reasons why it's not a good public policy, but they take a long time to explain. You kind of have to give somebody an economics lesson to explain what's wrong with it. So it's a really good retail policy for them that way. The last thing I want to touch on was something that folks uh, maybe in the political trade call a low information voter. And a low information voter doesn't pay a lot of attention to politics in between elections, maybe not even during the elections, but will cast a ballot. Justin Trudeau is a good candidate for a low information voter. They just see a picture, I like that family, and, and this is a danger I think that conservatives and New Democrats are worried about. But policies like this go to that low information voter as well who just can quickly go, I like that, I like a, uh, I'm an apprentice, I get a break on that, I like the idea, I'm, I don't like bank machine fees. That goes to the kind of voters that, that you That's need to win it. elections. I mean, there, there are real reasons why this is a bad idea. You know, when it's been tried in place in the States, when you tell a bank they can't charge a fee to you know, yeah. other customers, they just stop allowing other banks' customers to use their, fee, their machines. Right. Or if you ban the white label ones, what will it mean is you'll be out on a Saturday night and you won't be able to get cash anywhere. So you won't be charged the fee, but you won't be you able, won't able to get, to get cash, cash in the first place. Right. So, but these take a while to explain versus it's very easy for them to go out and say, I'm gonna just, just do this. You know, I'm, I'm going to go after the big banks because right. no one likes the big banks. It, economists will tell you scrapping the, or cutting the GST was a dumb policy idea. It doesn't matter. It's good politics. So there Put we go. Put money back in people's pockets. That's what they wanted. And uh, I, I will never argue with any tax cut. To me, <laughs> any tax cut is a good tax cut. Dan Mater, thank you so much for coming in and helping to us out here. tonight. Appreciate it.